Hi everybody, this is Mark at the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting, the world's largest historical firefighting museum. It's time for a little bit of a story time. And today, we got another story about a cat in the firehouse. There's quite a few of those. This one is called The Brave Fireman and the Firehouse Cat. The Brave Fireman and the Firehouse Cat by Bianca Bradbury. Illustrations by Stephen Medby. Gay was a big fluffy cat who lived in a firehouse. Gay loved the firehouse. He loved it because it was spick and span. Every day the firemen scrubbed it. Every day they dusted and polished the red engines. They washed the floor with the hose. They kept the firehouse very neat. It was the neatest and spick and spanest place in the city. And Gay was a spick and span cat. Every day he washed himself all over with his pink tongue. Then he sat in the big firehouse doorway to sun himself. He loved the firehouse because all the firemen who lived there were his friends. They brought him especially good things to eat. There was always a bowl of milk in the corner for him. There was usually someone who wasn't too busy to pet him. And most of the time there was a lap where he could curl up and take a nap. But Gay also loved the firehouse because many unexpected things happened there. Gay wasn't just a dozing and eating cat. He was a cat who loved excitement. And every few hours at the firehouse, something exciting did happen. Bong! The gong would sound. And there would be a great hurrying and scurrying. The firemen would rush around shouting to one another. Then the big doors would swing open and the red trucks would go dashing down the street. At these times, Gay would scamper out of the way. Yes, for a cat who liked goings-on, Gay's firehouse was just the place to live. Often, when the fire trucks were at home and the men were either dusting or shining the engines or sitting around a table playing checkers, Gay would watch or sit in the big firehouse doorway. The other cats, the neighborhood cats who were not firehouse cats, would walk by. They would switch their tails as if to say they wished they lived in the firehouse too. As he sat in the sun, Gay would say to himself, I'm the luckiest cat in the world. There was only one thing that was wrong with being a firehouse cat. Whenever the gong sounded and the clanging and banging began, Gay would have to dash out of the way. No one invited him to climb aboard the engine and take a ride. No one invited him to go to a fire. The men had no time to pet him then. If he tried to jump aboard one of the engines, they would push him off head over heels. And the one thing Gay wanted to do more than anything else was to ride on the biggest red truck. He watched the men when they rushed off to a fire. They always looked pleased with themselves. He listened to them talking after they came back. They had great stories to tell, and they always smelled very smoky and nice. Oh, how Gay wanted to see a fire. One morning, he made up his mind that no matter what happened, he would go to the next fire. He ate his breakfast as usual. The firemen were busy polishing the brass on the trucks. Gay sat in his regular place by the door until they had finished their work. When they were through, and the truck shone like new, the men sat down. That was the moment that Gay had waited for. Very quietly, while no one was looking, he crept up onto one of their trucks. There were a lot of things hanging on it. There were boots and hats and raincoats. Gay had no trouble finding a good hiding place. He curled up back of the driver's seat and waited. His heart was beating very fast, but he wasn't afraid. He was just excited. He waited and waited, and finally the big gong went bong. Gay huddled into a tight ball. He made himself as small as he could as the men rushed to the truck. Hurry up, Sam, hurry up, some of them shouted to Sam, the driver. Sam came running. He and the others hustled into their raincoats. Some of the men were hardly on the fire engine when Sam started up the motor. With a roar, they went charging out through the great doorway. The sirens started up with a screech that made Gay's ears ring, and off went the truck, racing down the street with the bell clanging and the siren shrieking. 
the fire engine didn't have to stop for traffic lights. Red light or green light, it made no difference. Whee! Cars stopped to let the fire engine pass. People stopped on the sidewalk and watched it. Gay's heart beat faster and faster when the engine swooped and skidded around a corner. Whee! Gay buried himself deeper in his hiding place. Then there was the smell of smoke as Sam suddenly stopped the truck. They had arrived at the fire. Sparks were falling all around. Clouds of smoke billowed over the truck. Above the shouting sounded the loud crackling of flames. The firemen swarmed over the truck. They were going to raise the ladders. Other fire engines came roaring up. The fire chief was calling directions to the other men. Gay had never dreamed there could be so much crashing and roaring, so much smoke and so many sparks on a fire. He put his nose out of his hiding place to have a look around. Then he crouched down behind the seat again. Out came more and more ladders, and up they went. Gay looked up and up. He was so busy watching the ladders that he didn't see what was happening right beside him. The next truck was a hose truck. The firemen coupled the fire hose to a hydrant. Then they pointed the hose across the truck in which Gay was hiding. He turned off the water. There was a hissing and a roar. For a moment, Gay couldn't think what was happening. Then, all of a sudden, what seemed like an ocean of water was pouring down on him. And along with the water, fell clouds of soot and ashes from the fire. Gay wasn't a beautiful cat anymore. He was the dirtiest, wettest, sorriest looking cat that ever was. And he was as frightened as he was wet and dirty. He wanted to get away. But where could he go? All around him were shouting and smoke and water falling like an ocean. He had to get away from the flood. There was only one place to go. He looked up at the ladder on the truck next to his. It seemed quiet and clean and safe seemed dry. He leaped over to the ladder and started to crawl up. He went paw over paw, up and up and up and up. He clung to the rungs with all his might. At last the water and the smoke stopped pouring down. The fire was out. Say, isn't that our gay? One of the firemen shouted. Why, surest thing you know, said another. Come down, gay. Come down, kitty, the men called. Trembling, Gay looked down at them from his place, high above the ground. Come down, Kitty. The men were begging. They were frightened, too. Gay wanted to come down. He tried to touch a forepaw to the rung beneath him, but it wouldn't reach. This terrified him more than ever. There was only one way to go, and that was up. So he began to climb higher. The ladder started to shake. This made Gay seasick. He dug his claws into a rung of the ladder. He dared not look down because the ground was so far away. Below, the men talked together. Someone will have to go up and get him, one of them said. Joe stepped forward. I'll go, he says. Joe stepped forward. I'll go, he said. Gay likes me. Joe started up the ladder. This made it shake more than ever. Gay looked down. He saw Joe coming, hand over hand. Joe called to him softly, easy now, Gay, be a good kitty, Joe won't let anything happen to you. Gay meowed, he hung on tighter than ever. After a while, he heard Joe's voice right below him. Steady, Gay, easy does it. Then he felt Joe's hands around him. At first, Gay was too frightened to let go of the ladder, but he knew that Joe would come to save him, so he pulled in his claws. Joe tucked him inside his coat. Hold on tight, he said gently. Foot over foot, Joe went down the ladder. At last, his feet were on the truck. He jumped to the ground. The other firemen gathered around. They petted Gay. They slapped Joe on the back. Then they laughed. They couldn't help it because Gay looked so bedraggled. He wasn't a spick and span cat now. But Gay didn't mind. Let his friends laugh. He was safely down. He began to purr when Sam held him on his lap. Sam climbed into his seat and held Gay while the other men took down the ladder and wound up the long hose. They climbed aboard. Then the fire engine went roaring home. 
When they reached the firehouse, the men gave Gay a talking to. No more fires for you, Gay, they said. Do you understand? Gay understood perfectly. He licked his fur with his pink tongue until he was fluffy and clean again. Then he lay in the firehouse doorway to dry off and to enjoy the pleasant afternoon sun. So what we learn from this story is a fire is no place for a little kitty. And it's also no place for a little kid. It's very important work, but it's work for the firefighters. And so always make sure it's, there's nothing wrong with being interested in uh, firefighting when you're little. Uh, there's nothing wrong with admiring the firefighters, even with watching them from a safe distance. But don't be like gay. Don't get up in the middle and you know cause a problem for the firefighters more than they already have. And also, by the way, for kids, human kids, there's nothing wrong with becoming a firefighter when you grow up. So you can always keep that in mind. Anyway, this is Mark at the Hall of Flame Museum. Really glad you stopped by. Uh, come and see us again soon. Bye-bye.